people because everyone should have a great looking avatar on Twitter, on everywhere, every social channel, wherever you are, you should have a professional looking headshot. And I say nine times out of 10, that should be a picture of a human and not a logo. People want to engage with logos, not with, I mean, with people, not with logos. Okay. So now we can get rid of that little cute little thing. And now I'm going to share my desktop with you. Okay, and before I start, I just want to do one more check-in. I'm getting an error message. Are you guys still there? Make sure you're still there. Okay. Uh when I logged in from my second device, it said we are having trouble playing your video, but it looks like we're all good now. Okie dokie. Okay, and I just sent out my, my, my um, chat bot just sent out a message to everybody on Facebook too. So I know we've got some people joining right this second. They're just now getting their, their notification. Alrighty. And of course the replay will be, be uh, available for a little while when we're done. So let me just get started. So we are going to be talking about Twitter power. And I was, I was just saying to Sylvia, I, it took me a, it took me a minute to love Twitter. I did not love it right off the bat, um, and I think those the reasons for that are obvious. Twitter is just not this fun, sexy platform the way that so many of the other ones are. And when you're limited to 140 characters, and now of course 280 characters, but whatever, whenever's that there's that limitation, I think the obvious question for people who are trying to figure out what Twitter is all about is why would I bother? With Twitter, when I'm limited on characters, the tweet lasts just a few seconds and there's so much noise. What is the point of, of Twitter when I've got Facebook and LinkedIn and everything else? Well, I'm going to show you some of that today. We're not going to do, we're not going to cover everything about Twitter, but I think I'm going to show you some stuff you might be able to put to use right away. Uh, we're going to talk about sleuthing on Twitter and um, using it in unique and powerful ways to engage with your audience and hopefully grow your business. Twitter is powerful and it is important. And rather than like getting all um, into the nitty gritty of the how to, I'm going to just jump right in and do a couple of demos for you that I think will sort of speak for themselves. So the first place that we're going to go is twitter.com forward slash search dash advanced. And let me pause for one moment while I check to make sure no one's trying to tell me that, a, that, um, that they can't see me or hear me. I'm not getting any notifications, so we should be all good. All right. So this is where we're going to go. And when we get there, uh, well, you're going to see, and we're going to revisit this in, in a minute, like real time, but you're going to see query boxes that look like this. And first, I'm going to tell you what I chose, and then I'm going to tell you what it actually means. So under where it says all of these words, I put a question mark. Where it says none of these words, I wrote the word app. And where it says to these accounts, I chose Test Kitchen. That's the America's Test Kitchen account. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna pretend that I work in the food space, maybe as a food blogger or a foodie or or something. Okay, now the question mark means I'm saying to Twitter, Hey Twitter, I want you to go out and show me all the tweets that are questions to America's Test Kitchen. Okay. And the reason I said none of these words app is that when I first did this search, um, I found out that there were a bunch of tweets from people who were complaining to America's Test Kitchen about their app. They wanted them to update the app or something. Uh, so I don't want any of those tweets. I just want 
questions to America's test kitchen. Okay. And I just did this last night, but these came up. So this person says, do you have an opinion on wooden versus metal bread boxes? This person says, I have a food mill. Do I need a potato ricer? This person says, what's the easiest way to remove that yellow tough knee area on the drumstick and keep the skin? I hate it. This person said, will you ever create a recipe for a mock soy sauce for people allergic to soy? And... The thing is, America's Test Kitchen or whoever your influencer is, like in your niche, there's somebody who is um, bigger than you, more well-known than you, has a larger audience than you, okay? And uh, so let's say in my case, that would be Social Media Examiner or uh, Social Media Today or um, even people like Amy Porterfield. Um, She's got a much larger audience than I do. I can look and say, I can say, who's asking what are the questions being asked to that influencer? And I can answer the questions if they're not being answered uh, in a way that, of course, is not obnoxious, uh, but just to be helpful. Um, and that would be perfectly appropriate because Twitter is like, you know, when you when you put a tweet out there, it's like spray painting it on a billboard. It's or just putting it on a billboard. It is it's for all the world to see. And it's perfectly fine for you to to, to jump in. Um But I would say that this is most valuable uh, in terms of getting uh, getting ideas for content and understanding what it is your audience wants to know. Because, you know, it's safe to say that the people who follow Amy Porterfield or Social Media Examiner um, are the same sort of people that would be interested in the things that I teach, right? So they are my ideal audience. Now... You don't have time to go in there and search all day long. And that's where IFTT comes in. And IFTTT stands for If This Then That. And it's a website that is one of my very, very favorite uh, websites because it's um, it's super user friendly and it's it's just got a really beautiful, um, easy to understand interface. And so If This Then That is is just what it sounds like. If something happens, then the response will be this. And so it's shortcuts for your social media and even um, devices like those smart light bulbs and doorbells and security systems. You can hook it all up right here for free. Uh, So we're going to go over here to the top where it says my applets. Okay. And then we're going to go new applet right here. Then we're going to say, if this, and then we're going to click Twitter and new tweet from search. And uh, there's a little cheat sheet here. If you click there, it says search operators and it tells you how to, how to search for certain things. But basically, if you want it to be exact, like an exact phrase, we can replicate what we just did on advanced search by using quotation marks. So I'm going to put a quotation mark a question mark and close the quotation mark. So those questions, and then it's going to be uh, to test kitchen and then close the quotes and I'm going to click create trigger. Now this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to click that if then, then that. And now what I'm going to do is look for Google sheets. So this is Google spreadsheets and I'll be honest, I, I'm not a huge spreadsheet fan. I, I hate them. Somehow I got out of, uh, you know, my education and my professional life without ever properly knowing how to actually really use <laughs> spreadsheets. Um, I don't know why that is. But the beauty here is that I don't have to create a spreadsheet from Google Sheets. I could do it from right here. And I'm going to show you. So I'm going to click add a road to a spreadsheet. So now what's going to happen is every time that query, someone asks a question to America's Test Kitchen, then IFTT is going to add a row that they're going to add a row on a spreadsheet with that exact tweet. And pretty soon I'll have a nice collection of tweets of questions to this influencer that is going to show me trends. It's going to give me a great idea for what my, uh, uh, about what my audience wants to know. And it's going to inspire me for creating live streams, courses, uh, blog posts, 
any kind of content you could think of, you, uh, YouTube videos. So that's it. We're going to just name it. I'm just going to call this test, demo, delete. And then, um, and then you just click create action and you're done. Uh, so that's pretty cool, right? So the next thing I'm going to show you is what I call the cha-ching technique because you can make money um, instantly using this technique, especially if you are a, a freelancer of some sort, if you're a copywriter, a graphic designer, a wedding photographer, um, something really straightforward like that. And I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So we're going to go over to, hmm, where's Twitter? All right, we'll just open up a new tab. Okay, twitter.com forward slash search dash advanced. And there's that beautiful advanced search query box or collection of boxes. And now we're going to go here to um, this exact phrase. And I'm going to type in I... I need a graphic designer. And uh, notice here uh, where it says add location. This is fantastic. If you're a local business, um, you can actually specify a state or a city or whatever right here under add location. But in this case, I don't, I don't want to do that. All right. So we're saying to Twitter, um, I want to know every time someone tweets, I need a graphic designer. And we're going to click search. Okay, and there you go. This person sent this um, three hours ago. I need a graphic designer to d design a logo for my uh, brand. Um, I need a graphic designer uh, who can use Illustrator and Photoshop. I mean, they just go on and on. So the person who is likely going to get this particular job is the person that clicks reply first and says, hey, um, here's a link to my portfolio. Let me know if I can help you. But just like before, you do not have time to go in here and do these queries all day long. However, what you can do is go back over to IFTTT and we are going to set up a very similar applet. These used to be called recipes, now they're called applets. So we're going to click if this, okay, and so for this we're going to click Twitter. Again, with the new tweet from search, we're going to put that in quotation marks. I need a graphic designer. And of course, whatever you are, okay, would go here. I need a graphic designer. Create trigger. Click that. Now, this is something special. Now, instead, I'm not going to do a Google spreadsheet, although I could. But in this case, time is of the essence. So I'm going to click SMS. And this means that um, every time someone tweets, I need a graphic designer, my phone is going to alert me. And then I am going to manually type back and say, hey, Fred, um, here's a link to my portfolio. Hit me up if, if, if you're interested or if I can help you. And um, yeah, completely, completely automated. And you are going to be the first responder in that situation. Um, if you don't have a title that's so obvious, you have to get a little bit creative. There, but there are things you can do. For instance, um, I once had a client who knew that they needed to, that she was looking for um, women who were in transition, like maybe um, uh, their kids had just left for college and they, they'd be looking for a new maybe uh, career et cetera, et cetera. So what we did was for that exact phrase search, we did, I will be an empty nester soon. And you cannot believe how many people um, tweeted, I'm going to be an empty nester soon. Now, that's not the kind of thing that you would just jump on and be like, oh, you are here. Maybe you want to join my business or, or whatever. But you can start a dialogue with those people, add those people to a list and so on. Um, so you got to, you just have to get a little more creative in that situation. So Twitter's been in the news a lot lately, and most of it has not been good. 
uh, which I think is one of the reasons that really made me – I was just that much more inspired to do this training sort of on the fly today because as I was talking about it in my earlier training today with this private group is that, you know, people really are – people really do have a bad taste in their mouth uh, right now, you know, deserved or not deserved. Um, it, people just aren't loving Twitter right now. But honestly, when it comes to business – I think that Twitter is as important as having a Wi-Fi connection or electricity. Like, even if all you're going to do is use it to listen and to and to do research, as as we've done already a little bit in these demos before, um, it's more than worth it. But if you uh, still aren't convinced, let me tell you just a few more things. So, Twitter is the most open network in existence. And what that means is that basically it's a PA system for the world. So you could connect with anyone, anywhere. So, I mean, unless it's the Pope or Queen Elizabeth or SpongeBob, most people are going to see your tweets. They might not respond to them, but they will see them. And you don't have to be following them and they don't have to be following you in order for this to happen. But all that noise like that we talked about earlier in the news feed um, that's flying so fast uh, that it just it, – it's really ridiculous and it really is like just a bunch of chaos. Um, I'm going to show you the secret to making sense out of that and that is in using Twitter lists. Okay, so Twitter lists are everything. So um, let's go over to my list so I could demonstrate how these work, Okay. All right, so here are my lists. As you can see, I have 131 lists, so I really, I really like lists. And as we scroll down, you'll see my pink avatar next to all these. That means that I created these lists, okay? But if you keep going, you will see that these are lists that I did not, um, that I did not create because I, I know that because I can see the creator's avatar next to that. What I did was I subscribed to this list. Let me show you how you do that. So this is the team at VaynerMedia, Gary Vaynerchuk's company. All right, so these are all the people that work at Gary Vaynerchuk's company. And I'm going to unsubscribe real quick. Okay, so you can see how to subscribe. So now that I'm in the list, you see there it says subscribe. I'm going to click subscribe. And now it's going to show up on my list. And whenever I want to know what these people are talking about, I get to cut through all that noise because I will just click on um, click on the list and this is what they're talking about. And I can engage with some of those people. I can retweet them. Uh, and so you just need to think for a minute, make a list yourself right now of some of the lists that you could create and how that might be helpful to you. The other thing, and I didn't talk about this in my earlier training today, but it's worth mentioning. There's 452 members of this group, okay? Those are the people that work at, at VaynerMedia. But look at this. There's 477 people subscribed to this list. And that can also, if I click on that, Look, I could see all the people who are subscribed to this. So so in this case, it might not be so super obvious who these people are. But let's suppose um, it was something very niche like a, like a food blog, okay? And there were 400 people subscribed to that list that was about food blogs or something. Then that would tell me that all the people in that list were interested. They were foodies. So the people who are subscribed to the list now become a potential audience for me. I could follow each of these people or if I don't want to follow them because you don't have to follow people in order to have them on a list. And that's another beautiful thing about lists. So let's pretend Titus is, let me find someone who's actually, all right. So this person, Nick, is a marketer, okay? So I'm going to click on these three dots. I'm going to click add or remove from list and I'm going to add her to um I mean I don't know how it's possible that I don't have a list called marketers but 
All right, I'm going to put her in the list called Digital Rock Stars. Now, lists can be either public or private. So let me show you that. I'm going to go back over to my list. Everywhere you see this little suitcase or padlock, um, that means that the list is private. No one can see this but me. Now, um, if, it, if I add someone to a list that's public, like the way that I just added her to that list called Digital Rockstars, um, she gets a notification about that. So there is a way now to actually become strategic with that. And I call that uh, my tap on the shoulder technique. So when you tap someone on the shoulder, what, what do they do? What do you do? You, if, if, if somebody taps you on the shoulder, you're going to turn around and say, who just tapped me on the shoulder? And this is going to be uh, really most effective if you, if you name the list something provocative that makes people curious. So some of my most, uh, some of the most engagement I get doing this is I have some silly lists. Um, I have one that's called charming accents. I have one that I've listed here called smarty pants. Um, I have one, what's the other? I just, just a couple of silly ones like that. But so for charming accents, if, if I see someone and, and I can see that they're from, Ireland or just basically anywhere outside of the States or maybe from New Orleans or something, I'll add them to charming accents and that piques their curiosity and they click back on my, on my profile. But also look at this podcast guests. So if you add someone to a list called podcast guests, the person's going to get notified. The first thing I'm going to think of is, am I a guest on a podcast that I forgot about? I'm going to click over or Ideal interviews. So if I get a notification, hey, Sally just added you to ideal interviews, I'm going to get curious. I'm going to click over and see what this is all about. Uh, but here's the thing. In order for this to really work for you, you need to make sure that your profile is as optimized as it can be. So this is Elizabeth. She's one of my star students in my course, uh, Bird Nerds, which is a, a course all about Twitter. And she's, she's done everything right. She's, she has completely taken full advantage of that giant banner that Twitter gives us on Facebook. And uh, she's put information about learn how you can protect your children in the digital age. I could see that she's got a community that I can join. Then in her bio, she's also got, whoopsie. In her bio, she's also got uh, a link to that free classroom or the free, um, Facebook community, and then also a link to her website. And she's tell, and right there, I could see she's an e-safety consultant, a lawyer, and a mom. Uh, and then she's got a pinned tweet. Everybody needs to have a pinned tweet. So if you did create a list that says people I'd like on my podcast or future podcast guests or something, then you probably want to have something that shows your authority or what your podcast is about should be tricked out all over the place. Don't worry about looking too blingy because the truth is most people don't see your Twitter profile unless you use the technique that I just showed you. Most people are seeing your tweets in their Twitter feed. And if they're curious about you, they'll click to go over to your profile. Um, and so, so it's okay if you, if you kind of bling this out a little bit. So how do you find good lists? Well, one is to just, you know, go to places that are obvious. Like if you are a food blogger, then I just picked this uh, Bon Appetit magazine, right? And they've got 3 million followers, very popular magazine. And I see that they have four lists. I'm going to click on that. Well, now I see that that top list only has five members, but it's called Bon Appetit. So I'm pretty certain that that's going to be a list of people who work at Bon Appetit the same way that VaynerMedia had that had their list. So I'm going to click into that. Sure enough, what do I see? Deputy editor, editor at large, editor in chief, and a couple other people. So if I have any intentions of maybe being featured in Bon Appetit magazine or develop, you know, the, this is a great way to start developing relationships and getting in front of sort of some key eyeballs, right? And... This is a, another way to find lists, and that is um, with Google. Whoops, let me go back. Uh, 
You might want to screenshot this. I'll, I'll pause here for a second. So it's site colon twitter.com uh, in URL colon list. And then in those brackets, you put the name of the list that you're searching for. And then you close it out with site colon twitter.com. Uh, and then that's just, that's going to pull up lists. Like you could see on the, the results here, members of Congress came up. Um, and U.S. Senate members lists. So this is a great way to pull up lists. And it'll take you directly to whatever list that you're looking for. Now, this is just kind of thrown into the mix, but it's something that I don't really, I don't think I've ever really pointed this out in a training, but um, but I use it. It's a feature I use a lot, and so I wanted to share it with you. And that is, um, you can embed a tweet. So if you click on the top right-hand corner of a tweet, and this could be any tweet, your tweet, somebody else's tweet, doesn't matter. You click there, scroll down to embed tweet. It's the second from the top. And you can embed that in an email, on a sales page, on your website. Um, and I've used this a lot for like testimonials. Um, after you do a webinar, for example, and you ask people to tweet out like their number one takeaway. In fact, you know what? I would like to ask you to do that now. Um, if you've, if you've learned anything so far, my name is my, on Twitter is at J-E-N-R-G-Y. Um, if you want to tweet something about that, something that you learned or something nice, that would be great. And, um, and then now I have your tweet that I can embed somewhere, uh, when, when I need it, if I need to show some authority about my knowledge of Twitter or whatever. Okay. And all right. So now we're going to talk just a little bit about how to use Twitter to get some media attention, get a little love from the press. Okay. So. No surprise, journalists and media uh, make up about 25% of the people on Twitter right now. And journalists and just the media at large, they're always looking for interesting content. They're always looking for a good story. Um, so the next, so the strategy I'm going to show you right now involves LinkedIn and a, a combination of LinkedIn and Twitter. So um, now, the bad thing about this is when you use LinkedIn's advanced search, it, it used to be completely free. Now you're only allowed, I think, like 100 search results a month or something with the free membership. But that's okay because I have another cool thing to show you beyond LinkedIn. If you have if you have a paid LinkedIn account, then you can use this till the cows come home. So up teeny tiny in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see advanced and um you know, I just had this horrible thought, like, what if you're not seeing my screen and, like, you're just seeing my face? That would be the most horrible thing. But I don't see any messages, so I think we're good. God, I hope so. I've done that before. All right, so you see advanced up there for advanced search. So you're going to click on that, and then you're going to get um, a little search page that looks like this. So what I've done is I've typed in uh, producer current and today show I am getting some messages or something so hold on I'm just clicking reload all right it looks like you guys can see me yay okay um current and I just chose the today show and then um and then current again so they're currently a producer currently working at the today show and for location I just left that as anywhere so now uh, I am going to click search and a lot of good ones came up I chose this person Katie Buckley and um so I clicked on Katie and I, I took, I went over to Twitter to see if she had a, a Twitter handle. And sure enough, she did. So this is her Twitter handle. And I was excited to see that she um, is only following 263 people and she's being followed by 915 people. And yet she's at, and, and she's active on Twitter. So what that tells me is that she's not Beyonce. She doesn't have a million followers. So she's reachable. She's likely going to, if she doesn't respond to my tweet, she will see my tweet. Um, and so that's really 
encouraging. The other thing I decided to do is I wanted to see who she was following because I was pretty sure she would have some colleagues on that list. And sure enough, there's some like other producers, junior producers, strategic content directors. So these are people I would never know to look for otherwise, but they're, they're being put out there for me on a silver platter now because, you know, they're friends of her friends. And if I tweet to her and include Malia over here, I don't know. There might be kind of the assumption if they see both of their names that I know one or the other. Malia might think I know Kate. Kate might think I know Malia. Um, so there is something about seeing names that are familiar to us, uh, you know, whether somebody's copied in a email message or something that gives a little more weight or validity to the correspondence. Uh, and then what? So now you've got you've got their you got their Twitter. Now what are you going to do? Um, one thing I really love to do is to tweet videos. Anybody, if you've been following me for a while, you already know this. It just still amazes me how few people take advantage of this amazing tool, um, and that is sending a video tweet right from your phone with a message, uh, like a heartfelt or maybe not heartfelt, you don't know the person, but, you know, like a sincere message. You're looking straight into the camera, and you are, um, you're, you're talking to this person, and nobody else is doing that, and it's funny because... You know, the more digitized we become, the more automated things get, um, the more crass the news is. It's like we're hungry for this kind of engagement. So it's 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 really uh, to your benefit to uh, we all hate the way we sound on video and look on video. So you kind of have to get over that. I would also say hold the camera like an arm's length away from yourself. Like I, I see a lot of people doing the like wait like close talker thing right into the phone and nobody looks good in that situation like it you could be uh the most beautiful person in the world but the, you're just not going to look that's just not going to look good um give me two seconds I, I uh i lost my deck over here on my second device and we're almost done we are almost wrapped up Found it. Because there's one other really cool tool I want to show you called Follower Wonk, which is free or free the way we're going to use it um, that I think you're going to, I think you're going to love. Okay. So this is Follower Wonk. Uh, silly name, followerwonk.com. And what is so cool is that Twitter, in Twitter, people put so much uh, interesting personal information in their bios. If they're a teacher, they're going to put teacher in there. If they're a mom or a dad, they're going to put it in there. Um, so just for fun, I put some stuff into Follower Wonk because you could search bios in Follower Wonk to see what would come up because here's the thing. Okay. So let's say you are a local business and you're going to have a ribbon cutting. And in this particular example, I'm searching for outdoorsman reporter. Maybe the event is for a local outdoor store, like you're a camping store. Okay. And, um, and you're going to have a ribbon cutting. You're, you could just send out press releases to the media at large, but wouldn't it be so much better if you found some local reporters who are also outdoorsmen or consider themselves to be outdoorsmen? So I just randomly typed in outdoorsman reporter and look at everything that popped up. Um, crazy, right? So they say, it says, this guy says, um, terrible outdoorsman. So clearly, but at least he's an outdoorsman. This guy, reporter, firefighter, outdoorsman. This person is photojournalist, sometimes reporter at KMGH TV, um, outdoorsman, wannabe globetrotter, thrift store nut. So people really put who they are in these bios, okay? Uh, in this case, um, I put reporter, just for the heck of it, right, to see, reporter fashionista. Look, people put that in their bios. This person says, 
WIVB reporter, award-winning ju- journalist, fashionista. Um, this person says NASCAR reporter, uh, fashionista, and traveler. So this one, I wanted to find business reporters who are also moms. Sure enough, they, business reporter, mom. Business reporter, mom. Uh, midday business editor and sometimes reporter, mom. Sports fan, food lover. So you get the drift. Okay. Uh, same thing now. Now we have them. And, I mean, we've identified the people. Now we can engage with them using video. We could um, send them blog posts we think might be interesting or just start engaging with them in general. Oops. I don't think we're done yet. Uh, oh, this is the last thing I wanted to show you is TweetDeck. So TweetDeck is owned by Twitter and it's going to look really similar to you, um, similar the way that Hootsuite looks, right? With all these different columns and things moving a mile a minute. Um, but it's just Twitter. It's not Facebook. It's not anything else. And you could create columns based on all sorts of different things. So we're going to go down here to add column and I am going to do a call, but you can see I could do based on mentions, based on um, uh, what's trending, all sorts of things, messages, but I'm just going to choose list and now all my lists pop up. So maybe I want a list of, um, all right, these are, this is a private list that I've called ICA, my ideal client audience. So people I've identified who might be future uh, clients or students. I'm going to click add column and it's going to show up here on the far right. Oops. So there it is. It's, it won't let me click out, but it's, it's right there where it says ICA and you could drag these columns all over the place, however you want. And, um, and let's see, while we're here, I've got this list called MVPs. These are people, everybody should have some sort of list like this of people who engage with your content, who retweet you. You want to be able to show some love back to them and retweet them when you can. Sometimes people who follow you, their content isn't really stuff that you can retweet, but if it, if it is, then you definitely want to do that. Okay. Um, all right, so everybody needs at least a column like that, but why not a col- also a list of competitors, influencers, uh, and any of those people that we just mentioned, you could, you could group them into one of these columns. And now once a day or so, I always leave this tab open, and just about once a day I can come over here and, um, and just check in, see what's going on in my different lists. Also... Uh, you can compose tweets right from here as well, and you can schedule tweets from here as well. So it's it's super handy in that way. Um, okay, and I think we can I can answer some questions if if you guys have any. Let me get back to my deck. Enrollment is not currently open. It will be open soon for Front Row VIP. That is my private membership uh, site where replays from trainings like this will live in the vault that do live in the vault. Uh, We also have live coaching calls twice a month, all sorts of amazing events like accountability challenges. We had a Picha Kucha night the other night, Um, loads of free or courses that are included, including a Facebook ads course, a course about how to uh, create a chat bot for your Facebook uh, page and your website. Um, and that, all that content, all those new courses, uh, you get a new course every month. So 
Uh, I really didn't set up this training to to give you a full on pitch for Front Row VIP. But if you want to get on the waiting list, because those are the people who are going to hear when the doors open first, uh, and then so I'll do like a soft opening of uh, FrontRowVIP.com to the people on the waiting list, and then after that, I'll do like the big launch webinar, all that all that kind of stuff. Uh, so make sure you get on that list. Now I'm going to come back over to you guys. I am going to share my camera. And uh, now I can see your comments. I couldn't see your comments before, you guys. Um, so hi, hello, hello. Uh, people who don't like Twitter just aren't using it the right way. Maybe it's not a good fit for them, but more likely, they just don't know how to use it. So glad to see you're doing this training. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, Tracy says, crap. All I use Twitter for is to complain about uh, IQ45 and... Um, and his, oh, IQ for, okay, and his administration. I'm afraid that someone might find it. Um, okay, let's see. We can see your screen, seeing your screen, okay. Oh, too bad you couldn't see it on mobile. Thank you, Tracy. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. Uh, so they're saying um, that uh, Front Row VIP is the best membership site that they have joined um, and worth every penny. So thank you for that. Okay, so any questions about Twitter before we sign out? Um, it, you know, I want to say about the political part, like what Tracy said. So if you, if you want to use it to keep up with the news, uh, which I do as well, is that you could take all your favorite reporters um, uh, or politicians, whether you like them or not, if you just want to see, if you just want to see what's happening, because things are, you know, changing minute by minute, um, is add them to a list, uh, make the list private. I recommend doing that when you're using Twitter for business and you're trying to keep up with politics, I just personally recommend that unless your business is politics, that you keep the list private. That's what I do. And then I click into there 10 times a day. I click in to just see what's new. Because the thing is, you know, it. the reason that there was the Arab Spring, the reason there was the Women's March, even though the Women's March started on Facebook in a Facebook group, you know, that was the spark, but the gasoline was Twitter. And that's how they organized so many people so quickly and how the Arab Spring happened. Um, because Twitter spreads like wildfire and you will almost always see things first on Twitter before the mainstream media ever gets wind of it. Um, so I don't know. I just like being in the know. I like to know things first. So Twitter lists are really super great for that. Hey, Julie, um, the replay will be here uh, for a while. I'll probably leave it up here for a day before I move it over into um, the VIP vault. But I think you will like it, Julie, because it'll give you some good ideas for um, some local stuff that, that you could do. Uh, where VIP? Uh, so if you go to frontrowvip.com, there's a waiting list. Doors aren't open yet. I'm really just waiting on this promotional video. I can't – I just um, – it needs some editing, and uh, and then once that's done, it'll all be ready to go, and doors will be open again. Um, thanks, Jen. Appreciate this. Going to watch the replay. Uh, yeah, you know, we didn't even get into, like, sustained Twitter strategy. All these are sort of, like, things to uh, keep in mind for listening and maybe going one step beyond, but just basic Twitter strategy um, is uh, is just making sure that you have all your content being sent out over Twitter much more regularly than any of your other content. And a lot of people cringe when they think about sending something out 14 times in one day. As long as your content is diversified, so you're not sending out the same tweet 14 times a day and that it's all mixed up with different kinds of content, it's something to strive towards because um, I don't have time to show you now, but I just checked my Google Analytics the other day and because Google Analytics will show you exactly where all of your traffic is coming from, not just social versus, you know, other outside uh, sources, but exactly which channels. 
and also exactly which pieces of content. But uh, far and away, almost all of my traffic is coming from Twitter and basically I've got content that is, is going out in an automated fashion um, through, I use Meet Edgar, but there's many other tools that do this. But the key is that um, it's diversified, number one, and it's helpful. So it's not just, I'm not sending out promotions. It's like for every 10 tweets I send out that is a tip or a, or a quote or something funny, then there might be, you know, then there might be one thing that is promotional. And, um, and then my other rule for myself is that I never automate engagement. So I don't like, I personally don't like those automated direct messages that people send that go into your inbox. Um, but, uh, and if anybody ever follows me, I don't send back, Hey, thanks for the follow. I only engage with a human being as a human being. So I will always, you know, manually tweet back to someone. Because let's face it, I mean, I am not Beyonce or Madonna or Lady Gaga. So I am not getting so many tweets that I cannot, for goodness sakes, you know, hit reply and say something human. And my guess is that same goes for you. So, um, hi, Flavius. Um, so I guess that's it. And I don't see any... I don't see any other questions or comments. So thanks for joining me. It was really fun to do this on the fly. I really had no intentions of doing this. I, I, I had it, I gave a Twitter presentation to a private group. Um, and, uh, and then it dawned on me, like, why not just do this for, for everybody? Because I've got it and I, and I'm rehearsed. That was still, it was all fresh in my mind. So. There you go. Have a great rest of your day. For those of you in Front Row VIP, I will see you tomorrow for our live Q&A at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know where. Same bat channel, same bat station. And I look forward to it. Bye.